What's up dudes, this is Jesus Loving Buddy. Today I'm making a video called Atheism Still Doesn't Exist. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, Say what? So initially I made this video called Atheism Doesn't Exist, and a lot of you were looking at me like, which is understandable because I was going after your argument and I respect that. But uh, my point is um, that the argument I made in that video was that atheists don't exist because um, you can't disprove God because you, in order to disprove God, you have to know everything. But as a lot of you said, you claim you don't have to know everything to still believe God doesn't exist. So what you're basically saying is, with the limited amount, limited amount of knowledge you do have, you believe God doesn't exist. Fair enough. So like what I said in the video was that there are no atheists, there are only agnostics. And agnostics obviously are people who claim to not know whether there is a God, and some would say they couldn't know whether or not there is a God. And I still, I still believe there's some truth in that because I just, it seems to me that atheism is just an extension of agnosticism. And by what, what I mean by that, it just seems that an atheist still doesn't know whether or not there is a God. He's just pointing in towards the direction that there is no God. So I guess what that argument that Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron brought was really just to demonstrate how closely related agnosticism is to atheism. However, by that criteria, then atheism still does exist. So, God bless Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron, but they're kind of pulled my leg on that one, but that's okay. But, as you might have guessed, I still don't believe atheism exists. Now, this is going to tick some people off, but I love you anyway. And uh, I don't mean to offend you and stuff, but I'm going to read some verses from the Bible. <coughs> Psalm 14.1 says, The fool says in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. And I realize how harsh that is. Arrgh. Romans 1.20 also says, for, the, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. So, I know that's from the Bible, but the Bible says that God has created the universe in such a way, and has orchestrated reality, that he has made himself evident to everyone. So it seems, I believe, that everybody does know there's a God secretly. So, whether or not it's a, a hurt past, maybe they're mad at God or whatever, I don't know, that's kind of none of my business unless somebody decides to share that with me. And I don't have the right to accuse anybody of feeling a certain way. But uh, I do believe that everyone internally knows there's a God. But then all the people who disagree with me will say, Why should we even believe in the Bible? And I would say, ah, 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 I'm glad you asked. I have made a super duper fantabulous Jesus Love and Mini Sheet with five easy to remember facts on them that will help you to understand why the Bible is true. And if you disagree with me, that's totally cool. But what is really fun about this is you can go to the link below and you can print this off for yourself and take one around and be like, shabam, this is why I believe in Jesus. And uh, yeah, and I, I think that's pretty legit. Although Google Documents is kind of weird, so you might have to like download it and then like, you know, uh, erase the stuff on the top so it scrolls back up and it's only one page. I don't get it. It's kind of weird, but I think you can figure it out. But basically, using my mini sheet, everybody can become a little mini apologist and they can go around and be like, proving Jesus everywhere, and then shabam, people get saved and it's a glorious moment. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I think you should believe in the Bible. Because I think there's wicked awesome proof for it, and you should check it out. And I will just kind of give you a quick overview of the five facts really quick. But you can go to the link and get your own. I encourage you to do that. Um, the first one is good and evil. 
if there isn't going to be a final judgment someday, then why should we care about the difference between good and evil? For example, say I'm walking down a street and there's this old woman I really don't like. You know, she's got her walker and she's like, oh, I'm old. And I'm like, I don't like you. And she's going down into the little subway thingy. And nobody's around, and I just decide to push the old lady down the stairs, and she dies. And since nobody's around, I get away with it. I mean, people think, heck, she was old, she probably fell. So why should I not do it? I believe we're all, we all intrinsically have this objective morality within us that tells us that's bad. See, I believe there's going to be a final judgment someday, and everything we do, seen and unseen by man, is going to come back to bite us. So, I think that's why we naturally want to do good, and we have this distinction of what is good and wrong. The second one is Psalm 22. It basically describes Jesus Christ's crucifixion experience 200 years before crucifixion is even invented. This one is like one of my faves. It's really legit. It, uh, you know, and um, the psalm starts off saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is exactly what Jesus says on the cross later. And uh, something really cool about Psalm 22 and also Isaiah 53 later, I'm going to talk about that later, I encourage you to read that to your to your non-believer friends and say, who's this talking about, you know? Who is this really talking about? And they'll probably go, well, that's obviously talking about Jesus. And then you can go, that's interesting because this was written hundreds of years before he was born. Oh, very effective. Also, Zechariah 9.9 9 talks about how Jesus would come riding in on a donkey bringing, what is it, righteousness and having salvation which makes sense with this whole messiah thing and that also describes palm sunday which happened so we can talk about when the prophecy happened and then when it came true which is pretty legit if you want more information on these things you got to go to my notes which is the second link in the side on the sidebar which is now on the bottom so maybe i should just call it the bottom bar fact number four concerns isaiah 53 which discusses how christ was supposed to come uh, die for our sins and bring us reconciliation and as you can tell by reading verse 5 well it starts verse 5 it says but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed so that is a pretty legit uh, chapter and uh, prophecy that that uh, obviously came true and what is fun about this is we can be like shabam this is when it was written shabam this is when it came true and if you want more information about that go into my notes that's the second link and you can check that out check it out oh. also my last fact involves uh, the the resurrections the resurrection experiences that all these people had uh, along with Apostle Paul. See, Paul, along with 500 people, claimed to have met Jesus Christ in the resurrection body over a period of 40 days, and they then went on to die for their sins. They were tortured to death until they died. And Paul was even, he was even a, a Pharisee at the time, a Jewish Pharisee who was killing Christians, and then after he claimed to have met Jesus, he then went on to write half the New Testament. He was in prison for a long time, got his, and he eventually got his head chopped off. So why would Paul and hundreds of other people do this unless they really believe Jesus rose from the dead? And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yeah, a lot of people will die for what they believe in. I mean, we know people that will drive or fly airplanes into buildings for what they believe in. But nobody is going to die for what they know is a lie. And I don't know about you, but I can tell whether or not a dead guy is standing before me in a resurrected body. So that's partially the reason why I love Jesus. I believe he died for your sins, and I believe that if you repent of your sins and you ask Jesus into your heart, you will get to spend eternity with him. So, yes, if you haven't checked out the uh, the mini-sheet, check out the mini-sheet, check out my notes if you want a little more information on those five facts. Uh, Jesus loves you. I respect you, those who disagree with me. I'm enjoying your conversation and, and the video responses. And uh, God bless folks, have a wonderful day.